This video is going to be a quick one. What? Anthony doesn't do quick videos? Well, I do this time. We're going to take a quick look at the focus stacking extension that's just been released for Luminar Neo. We'll see whether it's any good. I'm going to throw some photos into it and just take a look at what the results are. Here's a quick explanation on what focus stacking is and why we actually use it. Okay, so I have my camera. Pretend I'm taking a photograph of my microphone here. I'll set my focus point, let's say here, and I know that that is gonna be pin sharp. But everything that is in front of that between my lens and the object and everything that is behind is gonna be slightly softer. And the further it is from that focus point, the softer it's gonna get. And sometimes that's exactly what you want. You might want some beautiful bouquet, you know, like a nice soft, creamy background. And Luminar Neo even has a tool built into it, Bokeh AI, to help you create that kind of effect if you're not able to do it with your lenses. However, sometimes you want the opposite and you want everything to be pin sharp. Product photography is a really good example. Macro photography, when you're photographing very small objects and also even for landscapes as well, where you might wanna have something in your foreground, say a rock or some flowers or something and still have the very furthest point, say some mountains or something way off in the background, still in focus. That's when we use focus stacking because the lens is just not able to optically capture everything sharp front to back. You just can't do it. So to get around this, we take a series of photos where the focus point actually shifts further into our scene as we take subsequent photos. So if I was photographing the microphone, for example, my first focus point would be right here at this little gritty bit at the front, and then it would start shifting the focus through towards the back of the scene, and then I will have a series of photographs that captures the very sharpest point at the front right through to the very back of the object. I'm not sure that that's my best explanation ever, so I'm gonna show you some examples, but do me a favor, if you guys actually wanna know how you actually take these photos, how you'd set that up, just let me know in the comments, and if, an, if enough of you ask me for it, I will put something together for you. But let's take a look at the extension and some examples. So I'm in the catalog section here, and you can already see that I have the focus stacking extension installed. And the first thing you need to actually install it is to come over to the top left, alongside the Luminar Neo logo. You can see this little jigsaw icon here. You're gonna click that, and then you're gonna see the extensions that you currently have installed. So I've got HDR Merge, Noiseless AI, and if you come down to focus stacking, you will see this, but you will have an option to click a button that says install. You click that, which is what I've done, and then once you've done that, you're gonna close it down and you will see focus stacking appear here. As I say, I'm currently using the beta version. You guys will have access to this very soon. And just like HDR Merge, it's a very simple tool to use. So in this photo, we've got Jurgen Klopp and some of the Liverpool players, and this kills me because Liverpool is not my team, but a friend lent me these. But anyway, it's what I'm working with to demo this. Thought this would be good. Set this guy up at the front, and then the other players just drop off behind. So as I take a series of photographs here, you can see that the focus actually shifts through. I'm just gonna move through these as a bit of an example. So at the back here, you can see that the hair is sharp here, but we've lost all focus on the guy in the middle, Jurgen Klopp here. So I want to combine a shot here where he's nice and sharp. And then as I shift this through, other parts of the photo start to get that sharpness. So here we're seeing a nice sharp Allison as a goalkeeper and Van Dijk, he needs to up his game this season. Or maybe not if you're not a Liverpool fan. Anyway, got these guys in focus. So by having a series of photos where that sharpness is shifting through the scene, hopefully we can actually leverage the focus stacking tool by just dragging these in over here. So we'll click on the first photo here and you'll actually notice if I go to the very end photos, the focus point has actually gone beyond the items that I want to be in focus. So I don't need to drag these in. So literally I'm gonna look for the very last photo where the hair is nice and sharp on these guys at the back. So I think I'm pretty happy with that one. Maybe we'll go just one further. So I'm gonna grab this photo and then shift click on the front one. And I know that that covers the focal range right from the front to the back, 13 photos. And now I just grab and I drag all of those up into the plus icon there focus stacking, they're being loaded, and now all I need to do is click stack. But just like the HDR merge one, we've got a cog icon here, and that gives us the option to auto align, 
based on a reference. So I can choose any one of these photos. Now you should be photographing these kind of series on a tripod. So really an alignment issue shouldn't be a big deal. You shouldn't have to be auto aligning because you should be locked off on a tripod. If you're trying to hand hold these kind of shots, um, it's a bit of a nightmare, but obviously there is the ability for Neo to correct for that if that is how you choose to shoot them. I just wouldn't recommend it. So I don't need to worry about that. I'm just gonna turn that off. And also because we are using raw photos and this can handle raw photos, we're able to turn on chromatic aberration reduction, which is great. So I'm gonna tick that because I don't want any fringing and I'm just gonna click stack and I'm gonna let it do its thing. So it's now gonna be working on some D850 files and I'm gonna time how long this takes. I've got 13 photos raw files each one's close to 100 megabytes so this is going to have to be doing some serious crunching of data so that's 1.3 gig that i'm throwing at it saying calculate this for me so hopefully you're not working with as big of files as that but if you are it's obviously going to take a little bit of time it's also going to be pretty processor intensive and memory intensive which a lot of the ai tools that neo relies on they are going to be that so um, just while it's doing that, let me talk to you a little bit about your system. I would strongly recommend when you're building a system for that you intend to use Luminar Neo for, or any photo editor for that matter, invest in the memory, invest in the RAM, um, invest in a good SSD, solid state hard drive. That's gonna help you out as well. Those things have been really beneficial for me. I'm running 32 gig of RAM and I'm looking at upgrading very soon. I've had this system for about four years now, so it's a bit outdated, but a nice M.2 SSD if I'm losing you. Um, I can do a whole video about building your own system that is gonna be a beast. It's been a while since I've put one together myself, but it's fun. It's fun, trust me. Right, how's this doing? We're at a minute 19, I'm pausing the video, I'll come back when it's done and I'll show you the result. I literally stopped the video and then it spat the photo out, so we're at a minute 26 for this edit. And let's take a look at the results. Okay, you guys can probably see straight away there's something odd going on, particularly around the edges of the photo here. We've got a nice sharp Jurgen Klopp, which is great, and then we move back and then we've got sharpness throughout. However, we've got this haloing going on. So I know what's going on here and it shouldn't be, but bear in mind this is the beta version. So just like with the HDR merge and also the noiseless AI that they released, they did update those and improve those after the initial release. So I'm hoping that the same thing is gonna be true here because that kind of fringing, that actually comes about because as you focus at different points of your scene, your lens breathes. So it's actually changing the actual amount of the scene that it includes ever so slightly and that is actually creating this anomaly here. If I go back into that folder so we can see and I jump between say the first photo where we've got our focus on the manager and then the back one, you can actually see that they actually pop slightly, they've actually moved. But unfortunately in the final version we should just have this guy in focus, there should be no haloing obviously, however it's kind of grabbing some of this haloing from the earlier frames. Okay, I've got an idea where things might be going wrong. We can actually select a reference image for it to prioritize. And so initially, whatever Luminar Neo had that set at, that's what I went for. However, this time I'm going to actually select the first frame as my reference frame and see how that goes. Okay, so I've got the first in the series selected and I'll move all the way up until I think image number 13 was the one we wanted. So I'll select all of those again. I'm gonna drag them up into focus stacking Right, I'm gonna come up to the gear icon and this time I am gonna select auto alignment and okay, I didn't even have auto alignment on, did I? So maybe that was my faux pas. That's what maybe where I've gone wrong. I hope so. I hope it's not just that bad at the kicking out the results. So let's just select one of these. We're gonna go with, I said the first one. So I'm gonna choose the first image in the sequence and we're gonna go stack, kick it off and I'm gonna reset the watch and we'll time this again, see how long it takes this time. Now I've turned on auto alignment. Do, do, do. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> okay, we're at one minute 26, which is when it stopped processing last time. We're going beyond now, which is to be expected because now I've turned on auto alignment. Obviously, 
it is having to do more computational work in the background. Now, okay, it's doing its thing, it's bringing those down and it's about to spit out the fi final version. Okay, whew, <laughs> I was starting to get a little bit worried making a video on something that just didn't work, but we have a much, much better result now. There's still a tiny bit of fringing going on here, but that could be that I've just not included enough files, enough depth beyond where I finished the focus on the hairline there. Maybe I should have gone another focus beyond that. If we compare this photo here with one of the shots from the previous set, you can see just what a big difference that this tool gives us in terms of bringing sharpness right from front to back. <laughs> oh, that was nearly a big fail, wasn't it? So lesson learned, make sure you turn on auto alignment, even if you shot your photos on a tripod, the results are night and day. And also maybe a lesson learned to me, normally I prep my videos before I hit record, whereas this one, I'll, just, I'll freestyle it, see how we go. Um, oh, maybe you like the freestyle approach. Okay, let's try something else. Here I've got a photo of this camera right here and I've taken a series of 30 shots working my way through the focus point which I thought was the very front edge of the lens here. However, I've noticed that it wasn't actually set super accurately and I was relying on the autofocus of my Nikon D850 to nail this. Whereas if you are shooting this sort of thing, I'd actually recommend setting up your very first focus point, the thing that's very closest that you want in focus, do that manually before you start your series. Anyway, I can cover the how-tos of actually taking these photos in another video. But for now, let me just show you a few of these photos. If I go on the right key of the keyboard and flick through these, you'll see that the focus is actually shifting from the front all the way to the back. And I'm pretty sure I got right the way into the back there. So that is the furthest thing from the camera that was taking this shot. And obviously the very first photo, if I jump back to that, we're nice and sharp at the front, but as you can see, this little bit here is just a little bit soft. So I should actually have started my focus point a little closer than what I did. But anyway, this is still hopefully gonna give us a good example of what this can do. So I'm now going to throw in 30 raw photos from my Nikon D850, 45 megapixel photos, about 89, 90 megabytes each. And I'm gonna come in, yes, make sure auto alignment is on, which one am I gonna use as my reference? It's gone for the 10th image. Do you know what, rather than going for the first image, I'm gonna use one of the mid images, which is the 10th one, or that is actually a third of the way into the focusing, uh, which is actually interesting because if you guys know anything about hyperfocal distances, when you're trying to get the most of your scene in focus, you actually focus a third of the way into the scene. So when you're doing landscape work and you've got mountains way off in the distance and you've got stuff in the foreground and you want to get as much in focus as possible in one shot, you focus approximately a third of the way into the scene. That's just a kind of rule of thumb. So it's interesting that Neo has actually selected the image that falls a third of the way into the sequence. I wonder if that is by chance. Anyway, let's hit stack and see how it goes. I now have 30 photos, so this is gonna take longer, no doubt. So again, I'll stop the video and we'll come back for the results. Okay, we are at three minutes 50 right now. It's still processing, but it is a lot of data that I'm expecting the computer to crunch right now. So this tool is definitely one that when you set it off to run, you wanna go and make yourself a cup of tea or take a moment to get out of your chair because if you like me and you sit for a long time, you need to keep getting up, doing stretches, otherwise you'll end up with tight hip flexors. It's no good. Right, this is why I need to pre-record or pre-pair my videos. It's very late here in New Zealand and I'm talking jibber jabber, so my apologies. Still going, 4.49. Here we go. Okay, those photos are dropping away and any second at all, when that hits 30, I think we should see our finished version. Okay, that's pretty good. If I'm wanting to do some product photography and I want everything sharp front to back, this part is my mistake, but as I move through the scene, that's looking pretty good. Um, there is a little bit of haloing going on that I'm noticing. Um, so whether, again, that gets resolved after this beta version and for the final release, that's 
that haloing is gone I don't know but it is putting all of those photos together and it's doing a really good job again let me know if you want me to cover the actual process of capturing photos for focus stacking and I will go through all of that information of the whys of all of that that is Luminar Neo's latest plugin I nearly forgot the name of it focus stacking make sure you turn on that auto alignment that was my initial mistake so we're learning together guys we're learning together hope you've enjoyed the video leave me a comment you know it makes my day and i will see you for a follow-up if you want one let me know okay thanks so much for watching good night from new zealand